ever noticed how each grain of sand is unique? William Blake must have noticed this when he wrote, To see a world in a grain of sand. We travel to far-flung places, whether above or below the water, searching for unique people, places and pursuits, to discover their world. So as Robert Frost would say, you come too. Hello, I'm Hazel Andrea Stewart. I'm off to Manila to film the biggest cultural show in the Philippines, Pasinaya. No, Cushy, you cannot bring your toy that Winnie gave you. Cushy will stay with Dr. Retorado in Iloilo as a member of his family, a really spoiled dog. But I was also spoiled. You will see later that I had great help from the chairman of the board of the cultural center, Emily Abrera, who actually reserved me a private box in the main theater, so I was able to get amazing footage. I caught up with Emily at the Marriott Hotel. And there was my favorite dog, Mary Mart, whom I always feed, waiting to check to see if Emily had a gun, or if I had some chicken. It's a real privilege for me to know Emily, who seems to be involved in most of the intellectual and cultural activities of Manila. Pasinaya started not longer than five years ago, uh, and it was the brainchild of Chris Miliado, our artistic director. He was looking for a way to get ordinary people, you know, everyday people who usually never get a chance to enter the building. Right. Um, you will have noted yourself that the building itself is huge and, and many of them have no idea what goes on inside the walls. So the Pasinaya is the one day in the year uh, and usually we will begin it uh, sometime in January, mid or late January or early February. Uh, and it's the day when we open the CCP to anyone and everyone. You can, and it starts at 7 in the morning, it, it goes on till 8 in the evening. We find a theme for it every year, and people come. Many young people, students, families. Yes. That, that I find to be the most heartwarming aspect of it, that we get families from different uh, localities around Manila who otherwise would never ever step inside the CCP. I wonder if there is some young child sitting on the curbside watching, thinking, hey, maybe one day I could learn how to do that. The theme for this year is uh, the Chinoy connection. We know that the Chinese culture is so much a precious part of our own Filipino culture today. And the Pasinaya this year was meant to celebrate that. I, I, I found it to be a very different uh, and lively kind of festival. Uh, different from the usual that we, uh, we've had in the last three years. The show started with a parade of various artists outside the cultural center. And by the way, this is not my dog, Cushy, because Cushy does not wear boots. <music> the 
This is the only Marine Corps band in the Philippines. through the day from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. you could watch performers with many different talents all for a donation of 50 pesos Since there is a Chinese focus, I'm reminded of the old Chinese proverb. If you give a man a fish, you will feed him for a day. But give him a net and teach him how to fish, you will feed him for life. Miliado, Vice President and Artistic Director of the Cultural Center, was there to greet the Chinese Ambassador. I now declare Pasinaya 2013 officially open. Thank you. As the focus is on Chinese culture, I would like to share a little of the Chinese Filipino history. I was deeply grateful to Santi Morante who brought me to Intramuros to the Bahai Tsinoi Museum to meet the director, Teresita Ang Si, who is co-founder of the museum. Bahai Tsinoi was opened to the public in 1999. We bought the piece of land here and built the whole building from the ground up and raised every centavo from the Chinoy community. Uh, one of our ardent supporters is of course Jose Marichan himself who helped us in the fundraising for this uh, whole building. When we raised another fund for, to help maintain the whole museum, we had a big musical play uh, he produced one of the songs, everything for free. He, he produced it himself, he sang it himself, wrote the lyrics himself, and recorded it himself. Everything uh, gratis, to so just to support us. Because he believed that this are the history of the Chinese in the Philippines is a story that is awaiting to be told, especially to mainstream society. That they did not just go to bed and then dreamt of being rich and then the next day they just suddenly became uh, affluent. Everything was paid for with their sweat, their blood and their tears. It wasn't only the ten Bornean Datus that crossed the land bridges during the Ice Age and entered the Philippines. Yes. Tribes from South China also came, as is evident by their method of farming in terraced rice paddies. 
Early records show that Chinese-Philippine trade relations covered the entire Philippine Islands by the late 10th century. Uh, that was the time of the Pleistocene era, where the ice age when water became frozen, water receded, so right. it's not as deep as before that you need an ocean-going vessel. So it's more uh, boats like Balangay in the Putuan area, you find them, uh, could sail across the, the, the seas because right. water uh, is not as deep as for 250 years, galleons sailed 9,000 miles between Manila and Acapulco. The Chinese brought silk, pottery, buffaloes, hardware and farm implements and used these to barter in the Philippines in return for pearls, tortoiseshell, sea cucumber and shark's fin. And this was portrayed later by the Ramon Obusan folkloric troupe. Chinese are industrious and resourceful. This cobbler put all his tools in a basket supported by a stick carried on his shoulders. Therefore, he could walk the streets and mend shoes anywhere. Then there was this fellow who would read and write for a fee for illiterate Chinese. It was the Chinese laborers who built many of the churches, monasteries and stone houses. They manufactured bricks and roof tiles and also a kind of lime made from white corals and oyster shells, which you can see at the San Sebastian Cathedral, Bacolo. Founded in 1972, Ramon Obusan thought of starting a dance company that would mirror the traditional culture of the Filipinos through dance and music. The group has never forgotten the people who are the very source of its pride. For the past two decades, it's documented and performed the rituals of more than 50 ethno-linguistic groups in the country. When the Spanish came, it brought many more Chinese, but the two nations distrusted each other and massacres took place. The Spanish made the Chinese live in separate quarters called Parayan. The first one was established in 1582, just outside Intramuros. The Chinese have really made an impact here in the Philippines. One of the first things they did was to print books the first three being catechisms printed by Ken Yong in 1593. As the harassment continued until the end of the 19th century, the Chinese began to build a separate community. One of the most important people in this museum is the Philippines' first woman president. Cori Aquino rose to power out of the Filipinos' desire for peace and to end the human rights violations of the previous administration. She was a dedicated housewife, knowing little about politics, but she had a strong faith in God. When her husband, Benigno Aquino, was assassinated, that faith gave her the courage to lead what became known as the People Power Revolution. This became a new wave of hope, not only for Filipinos, but also for Asians. Even today, Cori Aquino is still revered as the voice of democracy and a multi-awarded champion for peace. Cardinal Sin, Claudio T. Hanke, what ties them together is that they were all of Chinese descent and ancestry. Jose Marichan is here because of his popular music, known not just in the Philippines but all over the world. 
he's a source of pride not only for the Chinoy community but for the whole Philippine society. His father, Antonio Chan, became the second largest sugar exporter to the United States. over 1,000 performances in the Philippines and abroad since 1986, the company has been one of CCP's leading resident companies. <laughs> Knowing that I couldn't possibly film everything, I made a schedule, selecting some of my favorite artists to share with you. At 9 a.m. outside the main theater, I caught up with this group, Teatro Rizalia Dance Troupe. 